Now during re-entry, air resistance produces large g-forces. So heat isn't the only thing we have to worry about. The force experience depends on the angle of re-entry. So if we uh, enter at a very, very steep angle with more air resistance, uh, then we'll get more g-forces. That means even if we build a very, very thick ablative heat shield, we'll still have to worry about g-forces, which can be potentially dangerous uh, to the space capsule and its crew. Most re-entries are subject to about 3G. Early astronauts uh, did need to survive stronger G-forces than that. Uh, one astronaut, in fact, survived a G-force of about 11G, although it was only for a short time. The G-forces aboard the space shuttle can be more precisely controlled because, of course, we have better control over the space shuttle. It has uh, lots of streamlines because it's designed to act like an aircraft as it gets to the last points of its re-entry. So this means it also has good control over its orientation compared to, for example, uh, a command module from the Apollo missions. So the harmful effects of g-forces can be minimized uh, by lying down, which is why when uh, a rocket launches or when it re-enters, the astronauts inside are lying down uh, on their seats, as we can see here. They're facing the same direction as the acceleration. That means that uh, during, for example, launch or during re-entry, we find the direction of the acceleration of the craft and we face in the same direction. If, for example, we're launching upwards, we face upwards. This means that the g-forces are pushing us back down uh, and so we get a sort of eyeballs in uh, g-force which will prevent uh, things like uh, eyeballs from falling out during strong g-forces. Finally, uh, we can uh, be supported by a contoured couch. Uh, we can see an, an astronaut demonstrating one of these here. A contoured couch has to be specially built for each astronaut and it uh, has exactly the same shape as uh, the back of their body. This means that as they launch, they're pushed into this contoured couch uh, in exactly the right way to minimize the g-forces. Now, uh, there are a few other things to overcome with re-entry, such as the ionization blackout. Uh, this is caused by the very hot air around the spacecraft ionizing the air around the spacecraft becomes so hot that electrons in the air start spontaneously jumping off uh, from the atoms in the air, right? This means instead of uh, atoms in the air, we have ions, which are charged atoms plus the electron floating around somewhere else. Uh, this is known as a plasma. And so plasma is very good at uh, conducting electricity, which is a problem if you're trying to send electrical signals through it. The layer of plasma will completely block all radio signals that, are, that try to be sent through it. So during this time where the air ionizes, breaks into ions and electrons, called a plasma, we get this sort of shield of uh, ionized air, plasma, around the space shuttle. And this means that it can't be heard by anyone on the ground. Although that's mostly at the front, so we can still send messages to satellites and then back to the ground from there.